did in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, before any plant of the field was in the earth, and before any herb of the field had grown. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth, and there was no rain, no, no man to till the ground. But a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. All the songs this evening should be on the PowerPoint, but if you're following along in your book, our first song will be number 790. 790. All the same. In vain, in high, in holy. Four hundred seventy-eight. Four hundred seventy-eight. I'll sing this song, Brother Justin. Sleep, Brother Justin, lead us in our opening prayer.
Shall we go to God in prayer? Our almighty, loving Heavenly Father, we joyfully bow our heads to you this evening. Father, we are thankful for the time that we have to come together again on this Lord's Day to freely worship you and to praise you, Father. We pray that as we go through this service, Father, that we will worship you in spirit and in truth, that the things that are done here will be glorifying to you and edifying to us. Father, we are thankful for this wonderful congregation that meets here. Father, we're thankful for all the members of this congregation. Father, we pray for your continued blessings, Lord. We pray that you will be with all the members of this congregation. Father, help us to be shining lights to the world. Father, help us to share your love with those that we come into contact with. Lord, we pray that you will be with uh, Brother Edward as he labors here, Father. We pray for his recovery from his recent surgery, Father. We pray that you will continue to bless him, Father. We're thankful for the deacons who labor here with the physical works, Father. We're thankful for their support and the things that they do, Lord, and we pray that your strength will come upon them in that work. Father, we're thankful for <coughs> the elders who shepherd this congregation and lead us spiritually, Father. We pray that you will give them wisdom, give them strength as they lead this congregation as they make the decisions for this congregation. Father, we are so thankful for uh, your church the world over. Father, we uh, pray for your blessings upon it, Lord. We pray for uh, missionaries local and abroad. Lord, we pray that uh, as a whole, Father, that we can reach out to any of those who may not know your word. Father, those who are lost, we pray that something can be done to uh, bring them into the fold. Father, we are mindful of those of this congregation at this time, Lord, that are that are sick. Father, we pray that you be with each and every one of them uh, in, the, in their various uh, needs at this time. Lord, we are so thankful for your word that you've given us, Father. We are thankful for the scheme of redemption that you've provided for us through your grace, Lord, in Jesus. Father, help us to be mindful of that grace. Father, and help us to always remember what you have done for us. Lord, be with Jeremy tonight as he brings forth a message. Father, help him to have a remembrance of that lesson. Father, help it to fall on our ears openly. Father, and help us to examine our lives in light of that message and make any changes that we need to make. We ask all these prayers in Christ's name. Amen. Number 262. Now before Brother Jeremy's lesson, number 267.
Good evening. It's good to see everyone out <coughs> this evening. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to, uh, again, bring a lesson to you uh, tonight. I believe we have uh, some note sheets. I don't see anyone in the back right now, but I, I think they're back there. I'm not sure if they've, they're coming through the door or not. I'll move forward. Maybe not. Uh, anyway... It's okay because all they were were line sheets. Uh, we didn't, I don't have the outline on the note sheet. Oh, there we go. If you want, any, uh, want a note sheet, Mike's coming down, and he has some available, simply a line paper to take some notes for our lesson tonight. Uh, as I said, it's um, just line sheets, and all I have on the screen is going to be verses, so you may want to have some of the jot the verses down and and uh, add your own notes to it. I tried to keep it as simple as possible to move, move through tonight. Um, so this is a little unusual for me. Uh, I usually don't use visual aids <clears throat> uh, in a lesson uh, of this nature from the pulpit like this. Uh, but I have one tonight that I'm going to utilize for the lesson. Now... I'm going to ask this question, and I know it's not typical to take audience response, but I, I'm curious. What is that? Plum bob. Plum bob. I knew Barry Calhoun would have the answer. It's a plum bob. The reason I asked that is because when I went to the hardware store this afternoon, and the, the associate working welcomed me at the door, I, he said, what can I help you with? And I said, well, I need a plum bob. The look he gave me. And so I thought, you know, if, a, if an associate at the hardware store doesn't know what a plumb bob is, I'm sure there are others who also won't know what a plumb bob is. But I don't have that long enough, but you couldn't see it anyway, even if I did. It's a plumb bob. Now, a plumb bob is a, is a well, it's supposed to be a construction tool, I guess. Uh, wherein it's got a weight, and at the end, bottom of it is a point. And if you have a mark on the ground, you can set that straight on that point, or if you have, like I have it hanging here from the top. And the idea is the gra that gravity will pull uh, that weight straight down so that you know if you measure from the line here and the line here, if you have a straight wall, the measurement will be the same. In Amos chapter 7, we have a reference to a plumb line. So I guess in, a, in the total unit, you have the plumb. You have the plumb bob and the plumb line. Uh, and the line being the measuring, in, uh, the, the part of the apparatus that you take the measurements from. Um, I just like to say plumb bob. Our lesson tonight is going to come from the plumb line. Before we get into to, um, Amos chapter 7, we want to make mention that there are principles of construction that are found throughout Scripture. In Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 24, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, and it fell. And great was its fall. You see... In construction, you have to have a proper foundation. You have to have a strong foundation or the, the work that you create, the building that you construct, is likely to fall. Same in our spiritual lives. We, we must have a proper foundation. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, <clears throat> chapter 3, in verse 11, we read, For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And that's a pretty common uh, uh, lesson that we 
that we study and that we learn, the foundation that we build our spiritual lives on is that of Jesus Christ. But whenever you're building something, not only do you need a strong foundation, your walls have to be straight. And maybe we don't think about that quite as much. We, look at, we think about the fact that we need to build our lives on the foundation of Jesus Christ, but that's just the starting point. That's just the, the base. If we don't live our lives and build our lives to a point uh, that our walls are built right, just like a construction, they'll fall in. Amos chapter 7, <clears throat> starting in verse 7. We read, Thus he showed me, behold, the Lord stood on a wall made with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand, and the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, behold, I'm setting a plumb line in the midst of my people, Israel. I will not pass by them anymore. The high places of Isaac shall be desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. I will rise with the sword against the house of Jeroboam. So here the Lord, uh, we'll look at the, his, the, the back story of some of this in a minute, but the Lord has got to a point where he's going to bring destruction. He's saying, I'm going to set this plumb line right in the midst of Israel. They have the standard. They have uh, the law. And I'm going to measure them against it. And, and those who don't measure up will be destroyed. The nation of Israel doesn't measure up. It will be uh, destroyed. So as we look at these principles of construction, we see the foundation that's been laid of Jesus Christ. We see the fact that we've got to build uh, uh, straight walls based on the standard that we're given. We see that we have to have an exact standard. You know, <clears throat> standards are key in construction. Uh, I was talking about measuring uh, with the line. Uh, you know, you take a, a measuring tape out, and you'd measure maybe it's two, three, whatever inches off of the wall, and it should be two or three or whatever the inches are off the wall from the top all the way to the bottom. And you know that that doesn't change. An inch is an inch. A foot is a foot. It's not like a, it, you kind of laugh about whenever we <clears throat> try to figure out how big the ark was and someone says, well, it depends on what a cubit was. Uh, how big was the guy that was building it? Because a cubit was, uh, you know, traditionally the, the forearm. But in, standard, in, in modern construction, we have these standards. You know, and, and standards of construction means that you can do something in one place and carry it over and it should line up. Uh, my dad and I built... Uh, some shells in my garage a couple weekends ago. And and funny thing is, he drew out <coughs> plans in his house in Crosswell and showed them to me and said, if you'll go and buy these these 2 by 4 by 14s and 2 by 4 by 8s and and uh, I can't remember what all he said, and, and then I'll buy some, some 2 by 4s here at home and I'll cut these and you just have the rest ready for me. And he did that. And you know what? When he got there, it all fit together. And we've got this massive wall of shells because what he measured at home was standard. A foot is a foot. You know, the world does not like spiritual standards. But we have a spiritual standard. There is a standard in which we live by that we must measure our lives to in order to be found right in the sight of God. In Isaiah... Uh, chapter 28. <clears throat> In Isaiah chapter 28, starting at verse 16, we read, Therefore thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not act hastily. Also, I will make justice the measuring line and righteousness the plummet. The hell will sweep away the refuge of lies. 
So here we've got the cornerstone in Zion, and a, a, a justice is the, 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 the line that we measure by, and righteousness is the, the plummet that weighs the line down and makes the measurement standard, and makes the measurement true. We have spiritual standards that we must live, like, live by. Uh, flip over with me to John chapter 12. In John chapter 12, we're told exactly what that standard really is. John chapter 12 and verse 48 tells us, He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. The words that we are spoken, that we receive from Jesus, are the, is our standard. That's what we will be uh, judged by. We see more reference if you want to flip over to Romans chapter 2. <clears throat> Romans chapter 2, starting in verse 1. Therefore you are, you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are who judge, for in whatever you judge another you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. But, in verse 2, but we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. You know, what, does God, what is the standard that God is going to judge by? God is going to judge by the truth. God is going to judge by the word that we've been given. As we said a minute, moment ago, the Israelites had, had the law. They had a standard that <clears throat> they were given, and we have a standard as well. The words that we find in this text, in the Bible. And moreover, not only will God judge based on the Word, in Romans chapter 2 and verse 11, just a little ways down, it says, for there is no partiality with God. So just as we know an inch is an inch and a foot is a foot, and that measurement will be measured from the top to the bottom, and it should be the same if it's straight, and I'm really not sure that the podium's straight at this point, but it's going to be the same. The standard that God measures us by is the same. It is the Word. And He shows no partiality. You know, in, in the judicial system wherein I, I work, we have a law. We have, uh, we have a constitution. We have... Uh, laws and Tennessee code annotated and this and that and and you know justice is blind and all that but at the end of the day uh, judges are people too and sometimes their feelings probably get in the way and maybe they don't judge one person the same way as they judge another because they're human but you know what God judges each and every one of us will judge each and every one of us at the end based on the standard that we have that we have, which is his word. So we know we have to have an exact standard. If we have an exact standard, and we know that we must uh, that we will be judged based on that exact standard, then as we go throughout our lives, as we go throughout our day, it should be our goal to build our lives according to that exact standard that we've been given. You know, the world, the world pro gives us a lot of standards. Uh, you know, live your life uh, based on your own pleasures. Live your life based on uh, what will gain you popularity, what will gain you, gain you sta st stature uh, in your workplace, social status in your circle of friends, what it, or, or really maybe the world gives us no standard at all. Just be whoever you want to be. Do whatever you want to do. Uh, Matthew chapter 15, 8 and 9 uh, basically tells us that, you know, they were following uh, as commandments the doctrines of men. You know, whatever, what, what men were saying, what men were, were trying to bind as commandments. We build our lives based on the Word of God and not what the world gives us, not what the world tries to tell us is important. 
And the only way we can gain that is through a sincere, a purposeful study of the Bible. You know, Bible study is important. There's a reason why we emphasize, uh, you know, staying for Bible study every Sunday morning. Because uh, that's, that's just another opportunity to gain more insight into the Word. There's a reason why we emphasize daily Bible reader counts. It's not because of a number. It's because of that means one more soul is reading the Bible on a daily basis. Bible study is where we find, where we measure ourselves against the standard that's given. You know the verse in 2 Timothy chapter 3, but it's worth uh, driving there. It's worth going there again. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. You know, when we're talking about building our lives based on the standard, that's a pretty good uh, blueprint right there, isn't it? All Scripture is given by inspiration. And what is it profitable for? Doctrine? for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete. You know, if we're talking about how do you build your lives, uh, it looks like that's pretty straightforward, that Scripture is how, uh, how we need to measure ourselves up, that we need to grow, and sometimes growing means uh, reproof and co- correction. Sometimes when we have our, our, our line and, and we <clears throat> measure it and, you know, we're an inch off here, but we're two inches off down there, there's something wrong. Something needs to be fixed. When we measure up our lives against the Word and we realize this doesn't measure up, there's something that needs to be fixed. That's correction. That's reproof. And we should be thankful for it. Too often we, we are corrected by a brother or a sister uh, or are corrected really by ourselves and, and we scoff at it. We don't like it, but, but that's why we're here. That's why we're together so that we can encourage one another to build our walls according to the standard that we're given. Turn over to the book of Hebrews pretty quickly thereafter, 2 Timothy. And we'll see why it's important. Hebrews chapter 2, starting verse 1, Therefore we must give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest we drift away. Now we can't drift away from somewhere we've never been, so you know these people, they, they've, they're, they're, they're Christians, and, and, and they're being told by the, the writer of Hebrews to say, pay attention to what you've heard. Because if you don't, you'll drift away. You'll drift away from the fold. Verse 2, For if the word spoken through angels proves steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? And Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 tells us that the, the, the word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Uh, maybe something that could sculpt our lives, you might say. Sharp enough to cut away the, the, the bad and, and let us realize uh, that we're not living up to the standard that we're supposed to live up to. That we're, we're maybe a little off kilter. So as we are living our lives, and we realize that, that God has a standard. God has set a, 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 a plan in place, and we find it in the Word of God, and we realize that if we're going to build our lives, we must build it according to that standard. But you know, as you, as, as you start building a house, or you start building anything, I went the wrong way. We've got to measure as we go. You know, this is this uh, as we continue with our example of the uh, of the plum bob. I had to get it in one more time. Um, maybe with masonry, it might be uh, the most important. 
you know, these, these plumb lines are, are used in all sorts of construction and projects and whatnot. When you're building with wood, uh, you know, if you find a problem, it's usually pretty easy to pull a screw out, pull an L out, and, and fix it. But uh, when, when a, a mason is working with stone and brick and mortar, uh, if he gets too far along and realizes that, that he's a little off, um, if he doesn't fix it, uh, that could become a lot off. And if he doesn't measure along the way, a lot off is a problem. Because you can't just easily fix um, a, a stone wall. So as we go throughout our, our daily lives, our Christian lives, we have to measure ourselves against the Word, against our standard <clears throat> as we go. We get a great example of this, I think, in, in the book of James. James chapter 1. It's a familiar passage. In James chapter 1 and verse 22, he says, But be doers of the word, and there's that standard again, right? Be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing himself, his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forget what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. You know, we can't be like this man who <clears throat> looks at a mirror and then walks away and, for, and, and you know, there's a blemish, there is a, there's, there's something there that I didn't see looking back at me. But as long as I'm not looking in the mirror, I forget about it. We have to reflect on ourselves or look at our own lives and the standard by the word. Are we a doer of what we hear? You can't just hear the word and agree with it and sit in a pew and uh, nod your head and, and, and agree with everything that's been being taught and then go out in the world and not do it. You've got to apply what, you, what you're agreeing to. You've got to apply what you read. You've got to apply the word of God to your life so that when you come back to that mirror and you look at yourself, maybe this time you'll like what you see because you'll, you will know that you're following the standard that God set. We have to continually uh, match ourselves up with that standard because just as the mason builds his wall, there's a point at which it becomes really hard to correct it. And as we go throughout our lives and we continue to tell ourselves that, you know, I, I, it's just a, a small slip up. It's, it, it, it's okay. Or that, that no one really knows about that. It, it's okay. And then if before long we look back and our lives a mess because we didn't fix it according to the standard be, that we knew we should have fixed long ago. And we have to tear ourselves completely down just like the mason. We have to tear the, the wall completely down just to fix it. But the greatest threat is getting the house completely done and the homeowner come home and realize you've done it wrong. 2 Peter chapter 3, we find out that God is long-suffering. Verse 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long-serving towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all <clears throat> should come to repentance. You know, the, God gives us time. God is, is long-suffering. He's given... Uh, he's given all of us here quite a bit of time to measure ourselves up against the standard that he's given. But at some point, time will run out. Time as we know it will end and, and, and the Lord will return and we'll be measured up against the standard that we've been given. And we'll have to find out, is our wall straight? Going all the way back <clears throat> to where we started in Amos chapter 7. And we'll wrap up our lesson and it'll be yours. In the verses preceding chapter, uh, verse, verse 7, in chapter 7, there's a vision of locusts in verses 1 through 3 and a vision of fire in verses uh, 4 through 6. And, and the Lord basically says in each of those, uh, I'm going to send locusts, I'm going to send fire, I'm going to destroy the Israelites. I'm going to destroy the nation. Uh, they're, they're done. At both times, <clears throat> Amos 
Uh, Amos says, O Lord, forgive, I pray, that Jacob may stand, for he is small. Both times, in verse 2 and in verse 5, he, said, he, he has this prayer, and both times the Lord relents. The Lord shows his long-suffering. The Lord shows his, his patience. But then comes verse 7. And he, sings up the, he, he hangs up the plumb line and he says, I'm hanging this up in the midst of Israel. And I'm not going to pass by anymore. They've had their opportunities. They know the measuring stick. They know the standard. They've had the law. They've had their opportunities. I'm not going to pass by anymore. At some point, the Lord's not going to pass by anymore. At some point, time as we know it will end. And the question that we have to ask ourselves as we go throughout this life, are we building to the standard? And maybe to follow along in the theme of the lesson, is your life in plumb? When you measure it from the beginning, is your walk as a Christian to where you're at today, is it a straight wall? Is it one inch off at the top and the bottom? Or are you an inch off at the bottom, and as you've gone along, you've leaned one way or the other? We have to build our lives so that when the Lord comes and He measures us against His Word, His response is, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Tonight, you have an opportunity <coughs> Uh, to start that Christian walk, to start it at, 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 I don't know where you want to start. Do you start measuring at the top or the bottom? I'm not sure. Do you want to start your Christian life and, and start, start working? I guess you build from the bottom up, right? Regardless. Do you want to start? And start building according to the word, according to the standard, and, and, and living that Christian life? Tonight's a perfect opportunity. Uh, to become a child of God through baptism and be added to the Lord's church. It might be possible that uh, you've been building that Christian life and, and somewhere along the way you realize that you're a little off plumb. Sometimes we say that as a joke, but in all seriousness, you find your spiritual life a little off plumb. You're a little farther away from the standard, from the word than, than you ought to be, uh, and it's time to make that right. In either situation tonight, we'd be happy to help you. We'd be happy to pray with you and for you uh, or to uh, baptize you so that you can begin uh, that Christian walk. If we can help you in any way, come now as we stand and sing.
this evening haven't had a chance to partake of the Lord's Supper, if you'll come be seated at the bench of my ride as we sing the first verse of number 444, you'll be waiting on it. <coughs> Shall we pray? Our most holy and high Heavenly Father, we come for you again at this time, thanking you for very many blessings. We're so thankful for this bread. We're so thankful for what it represents, Father. We pray as this one partakes that he will think back to that day and he will think about your son's body being hung upon that cross. We pray he will do so in a well pleasing manner. For your son's name we pray. Amen. Likewise, Father, we're thankful for this cup, the fruit of the vine, which represents the blood that was shed upon the cross and the ability that it has to wash away our sins. Father, we pray as this one partakes, he will do so pleasing to you. For it's your son's name we pray. Amen. Father, we're, we know that we are so blessed in this country, Father. We have so many material blessings. We, we're so thankful for, for all the very many blessings, and we pray as this one gives back, he will do so cheerfully and well-pleasing to you. For it's your son's name we pray. Amen. If you're using your songbook, number 990 will be the closing song, number 990. We'll sing that after these announcements, and then Brother Barry Cook will have our dismissal prayer. Uh, be sure to get a copy of the, the news and notes uh, for this week. It's going to have the information that was announced uh, this morning. Remember, there's also new house to house, uh, hearts to hearts uh, out there uh, as well. Uh, next week, remember, fourth Sunday service, so we will have our uh, fourth Sunday schedule with our morning services, followed by a fellowship meal, and then our 1230 service, uh, so we will be doing that. Uh, the Willow Avenue Gospel Meeting that we announced this morning, uh, there's several uh, who are interested from the congregation in going, uh, so we're going to take the van tomorrow night, and we're going to leave at 6 p.m. if you'd like to join us. Uh, that's the Willow Avenue Gospel Meeting with Brother Don Blackwell. It will run through Wednesday um, at 7 p.m. We'd love to have anyone that could uh, could go tomorrow uh, night uh, as well. I don't have any additional uh, announcements uh, from this morning uh, that need to be made. Is there anything else that needs to be announced? 
All right, well, we hope to see you back at our next service, which will be our midweek Bible study service Wednesday at 7 p.m. If you would stand for the closing song and prayer. You are the words of the Lord. Our God and Father in heaven, we are indeed thankful for this beautiful Lord's Day that you've given us, and uh, thank you for the opportunity we've had together here today with our brothers and sisters in Christ, and study your word and worship you. We pray, Heavenly Father, at this time you would be with all those that's been mentioned sick here today, uh, especially those of our number here at Carthage. Be thy will, bring them back to us as soon as possible. Pray, Heavenly Father, that you go with us now as we about to be dismissed, give us a safe passage home, bring us back at the next point in time. Forgive us where we fail these, our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen.